Hi, everybody. My name is Daniel Emberman, and this is To Debug a DAG, the Airflow Local Dev Story. Dirty secret. Developing DAGs is hard. Uh, there seems to be kind of a missing middle when it comes to, develop to developing DAGs. We all know the basic API for writing DAGs, and we all want these production-ready, well-tested um, DAGs that are actually touching our very important data. And there hasn't really been that much in terms of a story of how to get there. How do you write task DAGs that are well-tested? How do you develop against them? How do you find your bugs before you find them in production? Um, and there's a couple of reasons why this is really hard. So first is you need to deal with external connections and data sources. So you might be talking to a Snowflake cluster or a Databricks instance, and you have to set all that up. And it's really hard to do that in a local development story. Uh, you also currently need to run a scheduler locally or have some sort of an analog to actually get a decent airflow experience. You know, you can't just run a task. You can't just run it like a Python process. You have to have some form of an airflow to then pull those in, go into the UI, and then click a wrap. And finally, of course, you now need the right tests for actions that are taking place outside of Airflow. So you might be testing your DAG, but in reality, you're testing what your DAG is communicating with. And so it's really hard to get both the skeleton of what the DAG is and the actual meat of what is happening with the DAG processing. So there's currently three options, Docker-based, Python, uh, developing in the cloud, or rolling your own. Uh, with the Docker, of course, the pro is it's reproducible. You can include more complex environments like Hadoop libraries or system dependencies, and it can be one-to-one -one, uh, release to cloud systems. But many companies, especially those in the financial world, block Docker on uh, user machines. A lot of data engineers don't want to deal with Docker. They may not have uh, machines that are powerful enough to have Docker on them, or there might be like company blockages. And there's no really good um, IDE integration when you run Docker. Some IDEs claim to have like a Docker development story, but I've yet to see one that was actually well done. Um, and then finally, of course, there's, uh, sorry, the second is of running DAGs on a dev cluster where you basically have a dev airflow running in some cloud service and you can push your DAGs and test them. Of course, this is as close to production as you can get. You don't have to worry about connections. Everything's handled for you by your infra team. But you might be colliding with other developers, or uh, you might have to iterate by going through CICD every single time you want to push a change. And that's just not sustainable for a developer. And of course, finally, there's working with a local Python env, no external dependencies. You can use your IDE, but you're frankly kind of on your own. And you need to mock out your own connections. And good luck running multiple airflows because right now, you know. If you don't set those environment variables yourself, you have one Airflow folder with one Airflow DB, and good, good luck if those are two different versions or two different environments. And so that's really not what this should look like. What should a local development story look like? Well, you want fast iteration. You want to fail fast. You want to know immediately if something is wrong with what you're writing in your DAG. You want a decent IDE integration. You know, we should we should all want to be able to use as IDE debuggers. We live in this fantastic modern time where you can set breakpoints and play with the data live as you're going along. And it should be unit testable. You should be able to write unit tests around your DAGs so that you can test your assumptions and know when something you've written has broken one of those assumptions. So there has to be a better way. And here's a better way. So there's three main tools uh, that I'm going to recommend for creating a local dev environment in Airflow. The first is Airflow CTL, which um, for those of you who are at Caxel's talk, you saw that um, Caxel, one of our PNC members, recently made a command line tool that makes it really easy to create and manage uh, local Airflow instances, um, which we'll go over a little bit later. There's dag.test, which is a function that's going to make it really easy to test in your IDE and write unit tests. And there's the Astro SDK, which allows you to write more testable Pythonic DAGs while still interacting with your external connections, external databases, and external file source systems. So the first is Airflow CTL. Uh, as mentioned, 
Airflow CTL is a really cool command line that's just come out very recently um, where you don't have any Docker dependencies. Uh, each environment is isolated. So you don't have one Airflow home. You have one Airflow home per environment. So you could set up five different Airflows with different dependencies and none of them will conflict with each other and none of them will cause any problems with each other. Uh, and you can get up and running in just three commands, which we'll show you in a bit. The second is dag.test, which we introduced in Airflow 2.5. And the basic philosophy of dag.test is the Airflow scheduler is at its core, a very complicated for loop. So why can't we just take the tasks in your DAG and run them as a for loop? So under the hood, for that, when you basically add these two lines at the bottom of if main equals name, I'm sorry, if name equals main, uh, DAG.test, it actually just runs your tasks as a for loop against a local database. And you can see we actually ran our DAGs in the IDE, which we'll go over a little bit more uh, later. And then finally, Aster SDK, which makes XCOM significantly more useful. Uh, basically, you, using these decorators, you can create data frames or SQL tables and pass SQL tables into data frame functions. And a lot of unit testing of SQL functions can be done using the Aster SDK because you have this cross functionality between SQL and uh, Pandas data frames. And it also offers multiple data quality checks within the library. So combining all of these together, the hope is we can create a really solid local development story. So let's start with creating a local dev environment. So again, you're gonna need the Airflow CTL, an IDE of your choosing, and optionally, but recommended, the Astra SDK. So here's an example of what it looks like to develop, uh, to create a new dev environment for uh, Airflow CTL. So we didn't have anything running, we're able to pip install Airflow CTL. And now once it's installed, you really only have to run three commands. The first is Airflow CTL init, which creates your Airflow project. And as you can see here, there's a DAGs directory of plugins, requirements.txt, and most importantly, a .env, which is gonna be really important for the IDE integration. Uh, you can then run Airflow build to install all the necessary Python libraries. And then once you're done with that, just run Airflow start once, which starts up a local airflow. And then you can even just turn off the airflow and then dag.test will just use that SQLite database that has been initialized. Um, so here we run the airflow start. It starts our airflow instance. And now you have a local airflow in port 8080, which you can use for other forms of debugging see what you can use the Airflow UI, you can see what your DAG looks like, but that's not great for IDE-based development. That's not great for, you really want that rapid iteration, but it can be great for just kind of spot checking and making sure everything looks like what it should be. So now we're gonna talk about how you can set up your IDE for local development and debugging. Uh, how to add the necessary environment variables, adding your connections, local or cloud-based, and how to write unit tests. So as mentioned, you have this .m file that came with uh, the, Air, the Airflow CTL environment. And we wanna add specifically the Airflow home is really important for our IDE integration. So in order to do that, you can go in your IDE. I, I'm just gonna use PyCharm as an example. I'm sure there's an equivalent for VS Code. But if you go into runtime configurations, and then run configuration templates, you'll see you have an option of adding in an M file. And so if you find the .m file that came with the project um, using command shift period to see hidden files, you can then add that in and all those environment variables in that .m can now be a part of your local Airflow environment. Uh, this also means you can add further things that you want. So configurations or uh, pathways to other connections, uh, which we'll go over a little bit. So here's an example of what it looks like. So we have a basic DAG here and we attempt to run it. And then Airflow kind of freaks out because there's no SQLite for it to work with. So if we go to the run, the configurations and we set the environment, the M file. Now we're able to run the DAG 
but we can also go to some of the tasks and set a breakpoint, debug. And now you have the ability to debug, examine the data. You can even go to the console and play with the data and try to get the transformation right while in your Airflow context. This is actually running your DAG as it would be run on an Airflow worker, which means that you get that one-to-one -one experience all on your local machine. And of course, when it comes to testing, if you pip install the pytest.m uh, package, all those environment variables will be available for your unit tests. So an example here is we have this test transform function because we have like a transform uh, operator in our DAC. So we, we import the, um, so in this case, we want to make sure that the transform is doing what it's supposed to. So we want to say that we know what is five, one is 10, it should add up to 15. So we run it and it passes. But how do we make this fail? Well, so if we switch it to one, the, de the test still passes, but you still see that the failed assertion is right there. So what we were able to do is make a really simple PyTest fixture that yields to the test and then raises an assertion error if the term assertion error is in the test. And so what's really nice about that is that if you then add that fixture and run, it will fail when that assertion fails and it will fail telling you about why that assertion fails. So now you have failable unit tests on your that run on your local machine and you can basically unit test each of your operators. You, this can also be used for Airflow's traditional operators. It doesn't have to necessarily be used for um, Python decorators. And so when you're testing something that's working with an external system, like a bash operator or an HDFS operator, there's really only two things you can test. Either you can test the calls you're making using something like mocking, or you can test the side effects. So in this example, we have a test of a bash and we want to test that a file exists. Well, so I can make a validate function that simply asserts that the file exists once the bash operator is run. And now we, based on the side effects of that bash operator or the, the main effect of it, we're able to unit test something that in the past would not have been unit testable. And of course, testing an Airflow wouldn't be wouldn't have a lot of value if you couldn't add your Airflow connections. So to add your connections, you can basically create a connections.yaml file and you can just do SQLite, Snowflake, any connection you would use in an Airflow. And what's really cool is that the dags.test function allows you to point to a connections file and to a variables file. So you can plug in connections that will override any existing connections in the Airflow DB for the duration of that test. Uh, here's a list of all the things you can kind of customize as you run dag.test. But this is really critical, especially if you maybe want to locally run queries against your dev Snowflake. And so you can just pass in the Snowflake credentials. And now on your local machine, you are testing a full Snowflake DAG. Um, now let's talk a little bit about testing with the asterisk DK, because everything we've talked about so far has been great, but we've really only been using toy DAGs. We want to talk about how to use real data from real data systems. And that involves the ability to communicate of like loading data and transforming data. And so with asterisk DK, there's main, three main functions we're going to talk about here. There's aql.load file, aql.data frame, aql.transform. All you need to load, know is aql.load file loads up, you give it a file path, you give it a table, and it will load data from any look like many most of the major local data stores into a data warehouse like snowflake bigquery redshift um, the aql the transform is you pass in a sql function and it will auto generate a table based on that query and then aql that data frame allows you to take any sql table or python data frame pass it into the uh function as a uh as an xcom input and it will gen automatically convert that into a data frame uh, not going to go through all the connect the integrations, but there's a pretty wide array of common uh, databases, file types, and file stores that work with this library. And so, the reason why you'd want to use this in this scenario is it makes the process of writing Airflow DAGs a lot more Pythonic. You're working with Python functions. You're working 
You're able to communicate between tasks by passing actual data between them instead of kind of making a bunch of hacks to put things into external stores. And um, it really makes it easy to change out and test out connections uh, within a DAG before you pass it into production. Um, so these are the two things you need to do to add the Astro SDK. So you pip and add it to your requirements.txt. And then you add this um, Airflow core allowed to serialization function uh, environment variable, just so you let Airflow know that you're allowed, that Astro is a trusted um, library that you can serialize and deserialize between tasks on. So when it comes to testing using the Astro SDK, let's say you have some snowflake function that you want to test. Well, you can basically use aql.load file to load a small test data set into, the, into that Snowflake instance, uh, run that task, and then use aql.dataframe to run a validate function. So in this case, we want to get the top five animations, and we want to validate that the length of the data frame produced is five. And so it's pretty straightforward. We make the data frame, we create the dependencies, and we run dag.test with um, the connection path to that path that has the Snowflake connection. And that's all you need to do to now locally be able to test um, what would otherwise be a very hard to test um, external system. It's also worth mentioning that the uh, Astro SDK comes with a library of data quality checks. So you can run table checks, uh, column checks, and you can, again, use create your own custom data quality checks, which can not only be used as part of unit testing, but as a part of your DAG itself to help catch data issues early. Um, finally, before we go, I'm just going to give a couple quick tips on how to write your DAGs for easier testability. So one big one is use Python functions when possible. Operators are great for kind of dealing with a lot of the complexity of external systems, but they're not as easy to debug if you're running into a problem. So whenever you can, Try to think if you can do this in a more Pythonic logic, and then that will allow you to easily write those unit tests, easily set those breakpoints, um, and just kind of also make it easier to help your data engineers create their own operators where needed. Um, separate your functions from your DAG context. So in the example on the left, all the functions are inside of the DAG, and this is a bit of an anti-pattern because there's no way to import those functions into a test file now, because now they're a part of the DAG object, um, as opposed to having separate functions where now you can basically treat them all as their own individual operators that can then be tested uh, in your unit tests. Um, and then finally, when it comes to doing actual data processing in Airflow, people think that, oh, Airflow is only for external work, but in reality, if you're using either the Kubernetes executor or you have a Celery queue that's specifically made to have larger workers, there's no reason why you can't have um, large jobs going on inside of your Airflow tasks. They're, at the end of the day, they're just Python processes. So if the worker or the pod you're creating is large enough to take a large data frame, you can do large data frame work within your Airflow system. Uh, summing it up, Airflow CTL to create a dev environment, DAG.test to locally test, Astro SDK for more Pythonic and testable DAGs, and most importantly, have fun. Thank you so much. Pascal. Okay, thank you for the awesome presentation. So I just want to have one question for mm -hmm. my scenario. So I use Kubernetes operator a lot. So how how this uh, new Astro SDK and Airflow CTL can help me test on Kubernetes? Yeah. So with the Kubernetes pod operator, I would say it's kind of like what the example of the bash operator was, which is that you want to test the side effects. So if your Kubernetes pod operator is running some library, it's obviously going to be transforming data somewhere. So test that that transformation has happened, or test that the data is where it should be after you run that pod. Um, you can also, of course, have outputs on the Kubernetes pod operator. So uh, I believe it's like, like temp slash output or something like that, where there's a folder where you can create an output and then you can downstream a, ta a task decorated function to make sure that the output looks correct. All right. Thanks, Daniel. Thank you.